What's up guys, Ryan here from Mud Gunner, and today we are talking how to be prepared for shit hit the fan scenario, the end of the world. Uh, not really, but in all seriousness, we are going to be talking about really good preparedness thoughts. Now, what I mean by that is I'm not going to be able to teach you everything, right? Like I, I'm not an expert in any of these matters, but I do feel like I've learned a lot over the years and I've like kind of put some thought into what I think would help you be better prepared for worst case scenario. And again, I do not want worst case scenario. I don't want anarchy in the streets. I don't want a civil war or anything like that because I very much like sitting in my air conditioned house right now. So this is all just talking and just getting your mind thinking about certain things that you may have already been thinking about or things you haven't thought about. So let's get into it. And I'm gonna try to not rant too much. I actually have to go off my list here because I wrote down a bunch of stuff that I think are somewhat important. And I feel like this is hours of potential like conversation that someone could have, but I'm going to cram it into maybe 20 ish minutes. So I'm not going to try to keep you guys here for hours. So yeah, this is going to cover a bunch of topics. We are going to talk guns. We're going to talk about a variety of things, but um, I'm going to just kind of check these off little by little. So the first thing that we're going to talk about on a quick note is finances. And why would we be talking about finances? Well, almost everything requires money, right? And if you're not good with your money, how are you going to get anything? So one thing, I've worked at a gun store for about 10 years now. One thing I've noticed is there's a lot of people that end up getting nice guns, right? But their finances or their money strategy just doesn't do well and they don't maintain or they're not able to maintain, you know, buying the things they need or keeping the things they buy. So I think having a good financial strategy is going to be key in being able to either purchase what you want to have or be able to keep what you purchase because I'd say everything I buy, I buy used. I bought the scar used, I bought the token used suppressor butt new um but a lot almost everything on this couch and everything i own i buy used and that's how we get a lot of deals in life right you buy cars used you buy houses used you can buy almost everything used by people that probably bought it brand new for more so i think making good financial decisions is going to be key in being able to get you ready for what you need to buy because unfortunately um as much as i want to say the world doesn't revolve around money you need money to do anything in this world so Quick note, just be good with your money. Um, I look at a lot of like financial coaches and um, I don't like pay for any coaching. I just look, everyone has Instagrams or there's YouTube on almost everything nowadays. But uh, one quick one, Dave Ramsey, he talks about just some baby steps on how to like be uh, debt free and financial freedom. So save $1,000 in your savings account, pay off all credit card debts and then pay off your vehicle. Those are the first three steps. And then uh, on top of that, after that three to six months of living expenses. And that's tough for a lot of people to do because, you know, it's easy to rack up credit card bills. It's easy to rack up car payments and all that stuff. But yeah, just look into that and we'll kind of leave it at that. But good financial strategy is going to be key in being able to buy things and keep them so you don't have to sell them because people sell stuff all the time because they don't have the money. Um, so yeah, that was finances. And then next thing we'll talk about is, and this is not going to be in an exact order. I kind of just wrote a bunch of stuff down as I thought about it. Um, Physical fitness. Physical fitness is going to be key because if you can't move like your life depends on it, how are you going to be able to protect yourself or carry your loved ones, whatnot? But um, you got to be thinking about physical fitness. I am not the most fit person, and um, my current schedule makes it hard for me to want to work out and do all that stuff. But I still do mud runs and marathons on the side, um, and I, I really do try to push myself. We don't grow in comfort, we grow in uncomfort. So, um, yeah, again, I watch a lot of YouTube and Instagram stuff like David Goggins. I love his mindset. Um, yeah, not everyone can live up to stuff like that. And even me, I can't live up to like that type of mindset, but I still appreciate, you know, people that are extremely tough and I look up to them and I want to continue to do hard things in my life so that I'm not a little bitch. But yeah, do hard things. You do not grow in comfort zones. So physical fitness is going to be key. Um, also doing things like depending on where you live, doing things in the worst climate possible. So I live here in Arizona. It gets extremely hot. I did a 52 K, which is I think 32 ish miles. I did, I, I did a 52 K in August one year. I did not finish it because I thought I was going to have a heat stroke. It was five laps up and down a mountain here in Arizona during summer. And yeah, I only did about 33 K of the 52 K. But since then I've done other 50 Ks, I've done hundred Ks done marathons and mud runs and stuff. So I continue to do hard things just to keep like keep my body going, keep my mindset going, because just because you did it 10 years ago does not mean you can do it today. So continue to do hard things. Um, physical fitness is going to be key. Um, and then 
with fitness, the right and like shooting and running drills and stuff, the right attire, again, this is kind of all over the place as far as order goes. Um, attire meaning like the clothing you wear. So I wear 5'11 pants. I don't buy cry pants because they're expensive, but I wear 5'11 pants, belt, uh, boots, just have the right clothing for whatever situation you might need, whether it's you know going to the woods, going to the, the streets, like um, the right footwear is also key um, and just the right the right clothing for your current environments or whatever you plan on doing and especially year round. Um, yeah, clothing is important. And then we're going to talk food and food is going to be a few different categories. So food storage is one. Um, that's something I'd like to get into. Uh, I look at like my Patriot supply a, a lot and uh, yeah, there's a lot of food storage things that you can look into whether it's like buying the, you know, powdered food that will last you years, like the basically emergency food supply, stuff like that. I think that's important to look into. Um, also growing food, hunting food, identifying edible things in the wild. Those are all good skills to have. And it's obviously going to be hard to do everything on this list, right? Like I am not an expert on anything. I am not, there's a lot of this stuff that I need to do myself too. So if I'm saying that you need to do it, just know that this is all just topics to think about and ideas to really just kind of give it some thought on how you want to apply it to your life. But um, food, again, knowing how to hunt food, knowing you know what's edible, what's not edible, how to grow food, I think is all going to be important stuff. Um, on a side note, I have a guava tree in my backyard. That's a fruit tree. I've had that thing for like five or six years. It hasn't grown a single fruit. So it is a trial and error process just like anything. Uh, there's different zones for growing stuff. And like agriculture in general is going to be pretty cool to learn. And part of this is uh, John Lovell from Warrior Post Society. He did a video, I think a couple years ago, maybe a year ago, talking about preparedness in different ways. And that's kind of what, like, I like watching stuff like that because I like to think about it. So this is just kind of a continuation of what he did or what some other YouTubers do too. But we're going to be talking about other things that I haven't really seen everyone talk about. So yeah, food is going to be an important one. Just, you know, food storage, uh, Let's see, what else did I write? Yeah, hunting, uh, growing and identifying food in the wild so you don't eat poisonous stuff because that would be bad. We have a vehicle. This is a like interesting one that you wouldn't think about, I guess, but having the right vehicle, I think is important too. And with that being said, I don't have the right vehicle. And by that, it's uh, what is gonna be economic that can get you places, including off-roading capabilities, because I think that's somewhat important, right? Like. I get that you might not be rushing out of the city uh, because yeah, it, during chaotic times, you, know, you don't know what's gonna happen. If you've never spent a day in the woods, you're not gonna just magically survive in the woods if something bad happens. But nonetheless, I think having the right vehicle for certain situations is, can be helpful. Um, if you have a little you know, uh, plug-in vehicle and the power grid goes down, I mean, that's not gonna be very helpful during a bad situation. So um, having the right vehicle can be um, a helpful thing and you don't have to spend a ton of money right now vehicle prices are insane like I'm looking into these types of vehicles because I'd like to have one um, I hate how expensive vehicles are right now plus the interest rates are terrible but vehicles just something to think about uh, chemical threat that means uh, what happens if we get like radiation from nukes or you know chemicals or just something like that um, what is it Mira safety they post their gas mass all the time and I don't know much about gas mask threats, but that's something that I also need to like look into more. Um, that's just something to think about. So chemical threats, gases, stuff like that. Um, medical is very important. So I've done one IFAC course and that's IFAC is individual first aid kit, but just, you know, first aid care, life threatening wounds, um, even just learning basics like uh, how, like home remedies or like nature remedies because right we didn't have like doctors and hospitals and everything at one point in time but we still figured out a way to live during chaotic times now our lifespan wasn't as great but we still figured things out so knowing you know again this kind of goes into the plants right what plants might save your life or you know kill you but uh, medical is going to be very important i highly recommend taking some type of medical class here in arizona they also offer free uh, first aid, what was it? Free stop the bleed classes. I had my girlfriend take that. That was very educational for her and a few of my other friends. Again, I took the IFAT course, which was very helpful. And just learning medical is very important. And on top of medical, you also have medicine. And that's like, well, what if you have um, allergies? What if you have uh, certain pills or um, prescriptions that you need to take? 
something you got to think about because if that stuff gets hard to get are you going to be able to survive without it if not how do you prepare so that you don't just die the second all the medicine stops coming in so uh, medicine's important um, again being physically fit and taking care of your health is going to prevent you from having more medical issues down the road so just something to think about uh, tech savvy is something i wrote down too so i think tech savvy can come down to like can you make things work when they don't work? What if the power goes out? Like, um, how do you pump gas if all the gas pumps are down? Or, like, stuff like that. I don't even know that. But when, like, watching shows growing up, like Walking Dead, they had to figure all that stuff out, figure out how to get gas, figure out how to make vehicles work if they've been down forever. I'm not a mechanic, but just uh, knowing basics of stuff or building the right crew and knowing the right people that, you know, will hopefully want to be in your group if something bad were to happen, um, that, that can be all educational and stuff. So just tech savvy in a way of you can make things work if they're not working well, or just know how to, you know, some, something along those lines, but just being somewhat tech savvy or figuring out problems and knowing basics of vehicles would be helpful. Knowing basics of how, you know, building security or stuff like that. Cause if the power went out, there might still be things that are, you know, up and running, um, like, or knowing water supply, like how plumbing and stuff works. If you need to get water in buildings. Um, that's something that's probably important to know. Uh, I wrote down languages too, so I don't know any other language than English, but knowing a certain language, and I don't know which language, right? It depends on who's maybe a threat to us, but knowing different languages could, you know, help you out in the long run, uh, knowing how to talk to people. So in America, you figure you have Mexico down south, so knowing how to speak Spanish would be important. Um, if we have allies that we that might be coming to our country, we have to go to their country, or if certain uh, bad people are invading us, you know, knowing certain languages could be helpful, but I know that's a whole process in itself. Um, I've actually seen this other guy on YouTube. His name is Ryan, too. I don't remember his last name, but he speaks like six or seven languages. I think that's pretty awesome, and he's like my age, but um, yeah, languages could be important. Um, comfort tolerances. So my, my thought with comfort tolerances is do you know someone where the second they get out of their comfort zone, they just kind of like panic and they make rash decisions. They don't think clearly. Um, getting out of your comfort zone, again, like you don't grow in your comfort zone, but just knowing your tolerances and how to push past them and how to deal with them if you're uncomfortable, right? Like I'm in an air conditioned house. If my air conditioning was out for two weeks, obviously I wouldn't like that in our current society, but you would have to deal with that if there's no power, right? So like knowing how to deal with you know being uncomfortable i think is very important you see this in like either war movies or you see this in real time too like when the whole russia ukraine thing went off like when people had to flee their homes think about the people that had to walk 50 100 miles plus i mean you're going to be pretty uncomfortable during stuff like that how many people got left behind how many people got how many people gave up during that type of event so People's inability to deal with being uncomfortable could cost them their lives or their freedom, stuff like that. They're taken prisoner. So knowing how to deal with being uncomfortable, I think is important. Um, camo, being able to camouflage yourself, I think could be pretty important. Now, now that covers a wide range of things too, right? Like if you're in the city, in the woods, in the desert, whatnot, but just knowing camouflage could be helpful. What else could we talk about? Uh, night ops. So. Nighttime can be a scary place or the best time for you. So with nighttime, you need to know, you know, light. So having flashlights is important. Having batteries, having headlamps. Like I like headlamps way more than flashlights because one, mine is rechargeable. It doesn't require as much power. Like you can run a flashlight for maybe an hour or two hours. My headlamp will work for like 36 hours on a low setting. So being able to see at night is important. Being able to hide at night is important. Uh, night vision, um, I know it's expensive, but uh, night vision can be helpful, uh, thermal can be helpful, but just being able to, you know, either hide properly at night or move at night can be very beneficial to you. So um, just thinking about what goes down at night. And then another one that's interesting, alpha mindset. So as a guy, we want to feel like we're alpha, right? And have you ever put a lot of guys, like a lot of like alpha guys together? Or like you watch it on movies, shows, uh, military, you get a bunch of people that want to be the one that's in charge, you put them in a room, how do they handle each other, right? Like it's a fight for power or it can be a fight for power. I've seen it plenty. And I, I would say, you know, I, I want to be alpha. I don't feel like I'm very confrontational with people. 
and that can be both good and bad. I, I get that. I've been in weird situations where, you know, you have guys butting heads because they, they want it their way, but knowing how to handle people like that or be around people like that and knowing how to coexist with them can be very important because let's say you have a group of your survivors and then you bring on another dude. And this kind of goes into like the, maybe the walking dead or other things like having that fight for power or control can be the difference between life or death too, right? Like in the wild with animals or like lions, if another alpha male lion, you know, tries to come and take the pride, they have to duke it out. And whoever comes out on top is normally the one that rules the group. So just knowing how to either be around other alpha people or deal with them or coexist, whatever you want to call it, that's important too. So um, yeah, and it can get uncomfortable at times, right? Especially depending on what environment, like whether it's a work environment, like two guys wanting it done their way, or even girls, girls can be um, kind of rude to each other too. But just knowing how to deal with people like that or coexist with them is important. Um, kind of a different one, but I thought it was important to talk about, uh, friends mindset. So like knowing what your friends are like, or so I've experienced this and maybe you guys have experienced this. Have you ever had someone say, Oh, if the, if the world comes to an end, I'm going to your house. Well, no, you're not coming to my house. Cause I, if, if I don't know you then, or, you know, we don't train together, communicate together or know anything about each other, like in that way why would you want some random person coming to your house? You might know them, but they could still be a random person in that event. So um, I have people that I train with. I have people that I, you know, talk to the, about this stuff with. Now I'm not saying I have a whole team that's like, all right, guys, let's go meet here and do this and that. Like, that's a lot to plan. It's not as easy as like, oh yeah, we're just going to go do this if this happens. You don't know what's going to happen, but just knowing people, knowing their skill set, and knowing how much you can rely on them if you call them for certain situations, that's a good thing to note. And let's say you want to get a group of guys to train with and to like kind of build this mindset together with, um, just knowing each other's uh, skills and weaknesses is very important. Knowing each other's gear. Like if I've been fortunate enough that people have like loaned me gear if I didn't have it at that time. Um, but I've also worked my way up to like being able to have the gear and also loan it out to people that might need it. So um, keeping up with your friend's gear or having them keep up with you can also be important because um, I didn't get night vision until like later last year, but prior to that, I had friends that would go out and do night vision shoots fairly often. And I got invited a couple times and I was given loaners or sometimes I just had to use white light, which not great if other people have night vision, but just knowing, you know, limitations and what you have versus what they have, because it's nice to be able to just know that that person has everything they need. They don't have to rely on you for everything, but also being willing to help people get where they need to be because I wouldn't be exactly where I'm at without the help from my friends when I didn't have the right things. But now I'm in a position where I can try to help my friends that don't have it yet. So just something to think about. And then I think that covers a lot of like the like side note stuff. There's going to be things I missed, obviously. Like again, this is a topic that you could probably spend days talking about, but I'm trying to cram it in one video. Uh, courses is important. Um, courses meaning like the medical training, shooting. Uh, I watch a lot of YouTube and you can learn a lot for free online. Now you have to go practice it because there's a difference between being textbook smart and being able to do the physical thing. Um, I just watched, uh, what's it called? I just watched Band of Brothers and I forget the guy's name, but the David Schwimmer character, he is like the commander and he's a really good commander until like it actually comes down to being able to do the task. Like he folds under pressure and he folds when he's scared. So being textbook smart did not help him in the actual like combat scenario. So yeah, if you learn online, make sure you put it to practice as best you can. Now, obviously like you, it's hard to be exactly prepared for the real deal, but just running drills with your friends can be helpful. And I know there's the people that are like, you know, the whole LARPing thing, but Honestly, training is good and it's fun. Like this is all, this is more than just being prepared. This is about having fun too, because one thing I learned in school is if you weren't interested in the topic, you didn't really retain the information. So I'm very interested in this topic. It's a little bit easier for me to retain information, especially about guns. Like guns are my favorite. It'd be a little bit harder for me to retain information about being tech savvy or languages or um, medicine, knowing all the plants. It'd be a little bit like, not that I'm not interested in it, but I wouldn't retain the information as well as someone talking to me about a new gun because guns are more my thing, but um, I'm aware of that. And as long as you are aware and you're trying to work on it, I mean, that's the best you can do in the moment.
So I highly recommend getting as much free information online as you can, but either YouTube videos or instructors, whatnot. Going and taking courses is a good, is a good way to meet people, to make friends, to make connections, to train. Um, and then you take it to the range with you and you practice it as well, or medical wise, uh, there's a lot that can go into it. Another thing that kind of goes in with courses is like combat sports. So growing up, I did a variety of things. I did hockey, jujitsu, football, kickboxing for a little bit. So knowing all like there's just different ways of, you know, physical activities, this kind of goes with fitness. Um, I do rock climbing. Knowing like a variety of different skills, you don't have to be a master at it. Like I'm not a master at any of those, but now I'm not an amateur with any of those either, right? Like I know more than someone that never tried it out before. So um, trying new things is important. I would say from a skill standpoint, so I like the mud runs and marathons. Mud runs meaning like Spartan race, Tough Mudder, stuff like that. I like that. And something that goes well with that obviously is the gym, running, stuff like that. It's kind of hard to beat running. Uh, walking is not the same as running. You could walk 10 miles, run two miles. It's not necessarily the same like endurance stamina type thing, but uh, with uh, the mud runs, something that goes well is the weightlifting, the running, rock climbing goes really well with it. And rock climbing is less strain on my body. So um, jujitsu is a lot of fun too. I like jujitsu a little bit more than I liked kickboxing. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's hard to say which one is going to be like the whole best for thing for you, but just trying them all out is important and it'll help you learn skills and you'll find something new that you like. Um, so we got courses done. We got like combat sports done. Um, now we can kind of talk a little bit more about the gun side of it. So gun wise, I would say start with a good foundation. And by that, like you don't have to go and buy the fanciest thing. I'm going to talk about it for a quick second. This is my SCAR 16. I've been working on this gun for like seven years, building it up the way I want. And as of right now, this is my main squeeze rifle. It's night vision capable. It's distance capable. I have a one to four power optic on here. It's concealable so I can fold this stock. I can take my suppressor off and it's going to be one of the smallest 5.56 guns I could carry. Um, effective range for me is probably fine. I mean, I could probably hit targets past 400 yards, but you know, 100 to 400 yards is going to be pretty doable with this rifle and the optic that I have set up. I have a lot of time on it because it's not just setting it up and just letting it sit there. I have a lot of time on this rifle. I know it well. Um, now the SCAR is a proprietary system, so it's not as universal as an AR-15, but I'm aware of that. And I want to build an AR-15 that's fully capable of this as well. But as of right now, this is my main night vision, just do everything set up. But building a good foundation is important. So you don't have to start with that. You can start with a basic AR. Um, I started out with an AR-15. This isn't my first AR, um, I have it in the room, but this is a good way to start. And you can, you can relative, you can get quality for not an insane amount of money. So this is an LMT. It's a pre-owned spray painted LMT. I think I'm into this entire build the way you see it for about 1200 bucks. And that's a name brand gun. We have an aim point optic. We have a light, we have a sling. That's all you need as a good foundation. Um, I like higher end rifles, but you can buy a 15 to $2,000 rifle for about 1,000 to 1,200 bucks. If you shop around, look for used stuff. Um, I was okay with spray painted because spray paint also doesn't uh, retain value as much as just a factory all black gun. But yeah, just being able to, and being willing to shop around for deals, um, look for like meeting the right people, right? Like I've made, I've made a lot of good friends in the gun industry and I've gotten good deals from my friends and I try to hook them up too. So um, building connections is also very important. It's hard to get everything you want in life without good connections. So being connected is a, an important skill too. So yeah, this, if you were to buy everything right here, brand new, you might spend two to 2,500 bucks, but uh, it's part of being a good financial person gun wise is to not buy everything brand new because you don't need to. So Starting with a good foundation, both with the rifle and with the pistol, you can get away with, you know, a Glock with a light, call it good, holster setup. And the way I would th say this is if you treat it kind of like a monthly payment, right? Like let's say you allow yourself to spend $200 a month as a investment in your future, whether it's gun wise, medical wise, anything, um, or whatever you're capable of, right? But 200 bucks is about the price of a lot of like regular home bills. So if you think about it in that way, you can slowly add up because by the end of the year, I mean, you're at $2,400 that you could have invested in gear and $2,400, you get a fully decked out belt. You can get plate carrier set up, chest rig set up. Like you can get a lot done every year, but it's hard to get it all done in one year. Um, I did not do all this in one year. I am still acquiring stuff, still learning stuff. 
Um, but again, everything takes money. So having good money management skills is going to be very important. Um, as far as like a plate carrier goes, don't even start with a plate carrier, right? They're, they cost a lot of money to get set up. Start with a chest rig like this, cost a couple hundred bucks. And then when you're ready, and, you know, as part of that, like saving up for the investment, um, if you get a chest rig that's uh, both uh, plate carrier compatible, I can pop this off and clip it onto a plate carrier and then I'm ready to go. So you invest in a good chest rig. This is a Haley Strategic. And then when you get more money, you invest in the plate carrier, attach it to the plate carrier, and then you invest in plates, stuff like that. So you can do it slowly over time. It's not, it doesn't have to be an overnight thing. But yeah, just slowly investing over time is important. Just anything you can do to get yourself to the end goal. But people get distracted very easily. Um, basically every year I try to like knock out a certain thing. So last year was night vision. This year I'm trying to get an off-road capable vehicle. Next year, you know, there's just something every year that I really dedicate my focus to. And I try to get it done. I, I make it like my life depends on it in a way. But um, again, I still have fun with it. I'm still training and doing as much as I can with everything, but it is hard to be a master of all. So you'll hear the term jack of all trades. It's really the best that you're going to get if you're trying to go for all of this stuff. You're not going to be a master at everything, but you could be decent at most of it. So yeah, um, again, big topic to cover, but this is just a couple ideas to think about. I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm just telling you, these are things that I like to think about and just figure out how I want to get to that end goal. But um, be smart with it. I'm not telling you guys to get in debt over anything. Yeah, hopefully that kind of got your brain ticking. Uh, comment down below with anything that you might have questions of or anything that I missed, because I know I probably missed something. And let me know how I did on this. If, you, if there's anything specific you guys want to hear about in the future, again, I'm not a master of any of this. I just like learning as much as I can. So I try to help you guys as best as I can. And yeah, besides that, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for my next video.